actually said, Moses Korea admitted that GMOs will kill you. Uh, so there were those ones, there's the gentleman who talked about cancer. So you have it, the people on the ground, there, and then you had the ladies who are saying, you know, we don't even know. We need to be educated on what is this GMO. So you can understand, there's clearly a lack of clear understanding of what this animal, this GMO is. Uh, but first, uh, Professor Kiboy, you were responding to this because this is another uh, issue that has come up. These GMO seeds, what do they mean for our indigenous seeds? And that is a repeated concern that has come up. So this is a question again, just to refresh your memory. I think we've sorted out your microphone now. What is the threat of GMOs to biodiversity, given that introduced organisms tend to have dominance? Is this true? First of all, are they operating from the cor correct premise? Do introduced organisms tend to have dominance? Uh, thank you. And uh, once more, I say thank you for welcoming me in the studios. Uh, I would like, first of all, to put the aspect of risk assessment in context. And when I say risk assessment, we are like referees in a football match where we look at the scientific evidence, we look at the environment which the organism is being introduced, and we look at the implications or any potential risks that could arise. So for uh, plants like maize, the first thing we look at is the gene that has been inserted in the maize. And then we look at what is function, what is it supposed to do. In the case of the maize we are talking about is called Bt maize, meaning that it has a gene from a bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis that produces some toxins that kills insects that feed on the maize. Now, when it comes to now the environment, the first thing we look at is, or in terms of biodiversity, what kind of other species, related species, are in that environment. In terms of maize, uh, the first thing we look at the center of origin. Center of origin is Mexico, it's not Kenya. So the first thing is that we don't have uh, maize that originated in Kenya initially uh, to be able to, to be uh, in terms of uh, losing the biodiversity. But then there are also other varieties and land races that farmers have cultivated for many years. So that is now a question that we address. But in terms of food safety, there are also other risk assessment experts who are specialists in food safety. But generally, uh, the way I understand it, uh, from a scientific point of view, uh, BT is not uh, a poison to humans. That is my uh, shot on uh, this issue. Okay, and, and I'll come back to you on the question of, uh, do, will we lose, and I remember we, we got into this a little bit yesterday with uh, Professor Dwar. Uh, what does that mean for, uh, what, there's a question here, I'll read it, but, uh, they call it the indigenous or traditional, somebody actually called it traditional, I am the one who's calling it indigenous um, seed. Uh, but before then, uh, Professor Odwar, Jim, I, I just have to ask you this question again, because you, you heard for yourself that there is a lack of clarity. Is GM food manufactured in a lab? Is it, does it contain chemicals? <coughs> what is GM food? 